Hello, and welcome to Strategies and Techniques to a Literacy into Your Physical Education Program. My name is Jim Hamble. I'm a teacher in the New York City Department of Education in the Bronx. I'm honored to be here. Thank you to Fizeragaji for having me at this time. We're going to talk about a really important topic of not just physical literacy, but literacy. So without further ado, let's jump right in. A little bit about me. I am Chip Hamble, that's me. I have a master's in childhood and special education, grades one to six. I have been a phys ed teacher for eight years. I've taught. I teach in an elementary school, which is pre-K, pre-K to fifth grade. I'm right by Yankee Stadium in New York. I have taught childhood and special education for a few years, so 10 overall. I'm in the U.S. Bowling Hall of Fame for a 300-800 series. I'm also the Society of Health and Physical Education, SHAPE Physical Activity Council Chairperson. And that's a little bit about me. So I'm using this really cool app called Buncee, which you can definitely use for remote learning. What's great about it is that it will also do, this little icon over here will tell, tell you about if you want to look more into the words. And this little one over here reads the text. Jim Hambell, Master's Childhood Special Education, one sixth physical education. You could pause it. So let me go talk about a little bit more. So the goals for this webinar. So we're going to talk about defining literacy and physical literacy. So we have a working base. So we actually know we're all on the same page. And this is going to be, I'm going to be sharing things that I've used and things that I've done that are proven. To add literacy that I've used in my my program that have been successful, so this way you can use it. Which brings it to this point over here. I want to spark ideas. This is not the definitive. By no means am I saying that this is all you can do, but I hope this is sparks ideas for you, and you can use them effectively. While I am in most of my experiences is predominantly in phys- in elementary, but. I want to, there's a lot of different things and hopefully a lot of different ways you can bring this to if you teach older students. In America, we call that middle school and high school. But also one thing about this, this is an interactive webinar. I can't see kids in my head, but there are going to be times where I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask you to reflect about something. And we're also going to be times where we're going to get up and moving. So those are some of the goals. Let's keep this party going. So let's get up and move. I have met Miss Melanie Levenberg for a company called Dance Play, which is really great about physical literacy. So we'll watch it for a few minutes or two, but watch what she does. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Melanie, and I'm from the program called Dance Play. It's a program where we play with dance. And we're also the world leading company um, in bringing physical literacy development to kids through dance. But all of our moves have purpose and all of them are founded in fundamental movement skills. So what we are here to do today is to teach you how you can do the whip, nay, nay, watch me song, uh, but using fundamental movement skills to modify a few of the song's moves so that uh, you're really focusing more on fundamental skills like jumping on one foot and jumping on two feet. So the moves for the song are um, when you whip, you basically step with one foot and you whip it down you tilt your head if you can, it's like you're driving a car. Um, and then when you nay nay, it's pretty much just a hand wave, but you go backwards. And then you do it on the other hand, whip, whip, and then you nay nay again. So that's called the whip and the nay nay. You just step and you hold, and then you wave. Nice and easy. Now the watch me part, the part that comes right after this, what we're going to do is we're going to use the whole space. We're going to work on locomotor patterns, which means we're going to move around the space. And all you're going to do is bounce from one foot to the other. And you're just going to point to other people around you and say, watch me, watch me. And you're kind of showing them your style as you're moving through the space and leaping from one leg to the other. <laughs> now, the stanky leg, we're not going to mess with that one. That is a great dance move. So the stanky leg is you just lean down onto one leg, put all your balance, and then you kind of let this leg wobble in and out, in and out, and then switch it to the other leg. 
in and out, in and out, just like that. Now remember, dancing is all about being the most fun version of you. So don't worry about getting it wrong. You can't get it wrong. If you're smiling and moving, then you're doing it right. Another move that you're going to need to know is called the bop. So for us, the bop, instead of staying on the spot, we're going to use both feet and jump around on both feet, bop, bop. We're going to bring our hands together, elbows in, and just bop around the space, breaking your legs. Here we're going to work on having our legs do symmetrical movements. So both of these coming in and out at the same time or asymmetrical. So you're doing silly things with your legs to break your legs. Anything that makes it look like you're breaking your legs, you're doing it right. <laughs> Move you need to know is the Superman. So the Superman, you're gonna jump backwards three times or sideways. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then your wrist is gonna run and <sighs> Superman forward as best you can. You're gonna go another way backwards and you're gonna run and go <sighs> Superman. Again, <laughs> now the dump part, all I want you to pretend is like you're taking your makeup and you're dabbing it on your face, you're dabbing it on your face, and you're being super really cute. Now, if you don't like that, you can just freestyle and you do whatever you want in this part. You just kind of bop and do it when you're doing the dump and so you know all the other moves. Let's do it with some music. You are in your I love Dance Pie. I've actually done this workshop with her and I've met that person and she is this it's if you think this is high energy, it really is. I did this for an hour and a half and I it was one of the best workouts I've ever had. But I like to use this as an example because if you use other websites like Go Noodle and other things where sometimes it just has you standing right there and dancing, I like the overall message of this. And a great way to start springboard us into I want you to talk about what is physical literacy think about the video we just watched what do you know about physical literacy what do you know about literacy in general take a minute write it down think it out So physical literacy is a term that's been used a lot. And I kind of, with my master's in childhood and special education, I've done a bit of teaching of writing as much as, as well as myself. And physical literacy is basically focusing on three things. We want students to have the motivation to want them to move. We want them to be competent, to have the skills to do it, like in the video, to do even silly simple moves like doing a duff or breaking your knees or doing whipping and nay and anything. I, I, I can't do it, but to be confident, to even for me, to want to just to even want to just try that, to be confident, so the three, but if you think about it, when students are doing literacy, reading, and writing, and, and studying words in the classroom, other, do you see, notice any similarities or, or, or commonalities, where like in reading, share reading aloud, shared reading, guided reading, independent reading, isn't that, isn't the ultimate goal of also physical literacy autonomy, we want students to be active for life, and reading, reading aloud, modeling, practicing with them, and then independent reading, same thing with the writing. The goal on the bottom of these two is, is it, what, independent. 
I may not explicitly say that, but if you notice, there's a, there's, a, there's a child who is doing a back lift, so they feel pretty confident and competent. And word study is, it's not so much independent, but look, it says vocabulary are those things that we talk about. So do they have more in common or are they more different? Even though one is what we predominantly work around is physical education and health teachers, but are they more the same or are they more different? Take a minute to think, to, to, to think about that. Purpose personally, and this is my point of view, and I hope you may share the point of view, or I can help you explain to what I'm thinking about. Literacy and physical, not just physical literacy, but literacy in general, because going back, for me, I really see that there is duality of both, that there's really, there are a lot of similarities that we want to inspire autonomy. We want students to be able to check themselves, assess themselves, assess others. That's really what the name of the game is. So. We may be teaching different skills, but we're all teaching different kind of the same philosophies. We want to be students, like I said, to be autonomous. So if you could do it now, depending how you do use literacy, I like to use it for station signs, deep integration to inspire students, to inspire them to do it. So that when students come and they're at the safety, if you do a mini lesson and a warm up, and now that you're playing on their own, they actually want to do things on their own. They want to be able to, like, even kindergartners. Of course, but, you know, they require more, but, and of course, we're talking differentiation and being what's appropriate practices and understanding what, what's best for each grade, but it, it means something. Once you embed it into your program, it can be really good. So I take a look at this video. Here we have two kids, a boy named Sanjay and a girl named April. Sanjay and April are kids just like you, although they are cartoons. I guess they're not exactly just like you now, are they? Maybe I'll give them jetpacks. Why not? You know what? Maybe jetpacks are a bad idea. My bad. Now, we really want Sanjay and April to be happy kids. For that to happen, we want them to have fun being active and to learn to make healthy choices. But to do this, there are skills they have to learn first. Yeah, skills. Watch this. Sanjay, let's have you run a race. We'll draw a track here and give you a really tough opponent to run against. How about a cheetah? They're pretty fast. And let's put April on a baseball diamond. She can be playing against someone tough too. How about a team of elephants who will use their trunks to hit the ball? Now, in order for Sanjay and April to get better at their activities, they have to learn some basic skills first. Think about it. If Sanjay hasn't learned how to run properly, he won't be able to run a race very well and April won't really be ready to play baseball until she learns to catch. To be active and to have fun playing lots of games and sports, there are a lot of basic skills you should learn. Things like how to dodge, skip, jump, kick, overhand throw, catch, and run. If you learn skills like these, you'll end up using them in sports and physical activities, and you'll be confident playing them. This is called being physically literate. If you become physically literate and learn these basic skills, then you'll be able to try more activities and activities are fun. If you can run, you can take part in soccer, basketball, or hiking. If you can throw, you can play baseball, cricket, or wheelchair bocce. If you can balance, you can do yoga, gymnastics, or even shark riding. Okay, you got me. I made shark riding up. But imagine. Now, not only do we want Sanjay and April to be active, we also want them to learn to make healthy choices. There are skills you have to learn for that, too. But instead of running and catching, these are thinking and doing skills. Things like saying kind words, listening to each other, and knowing what you're feeling. Learning these help you make healthy decisions, like eating well, wearing your bike helmet, and making smart life choices. This is called health literacy. If you learn the skills of health literacy, you might choose to do fun activities like read a book, go outside and be active, or draw instead of only playing video games. And you may choose to eat more fruits and vegetables instead of mostly candy. I know, Mr. Cheetah, but being healthy is just as important for cheetahs as it is for kids. 
So if Sanjay and April can learn health literacy and physical literacy, they'll really be on the right track. Then Sanjay and April will feel good about participating in those activities. And they'll want to try more activities because they know they have the skills to be good at it. They'll also have the skills to make choices for their health and well-being. And in the end, they'll be active, happier, and healthier. Even if you take away their jetpacks. Sorry, guys. I really like the video because it also touches upon health literacy and what I like to think of cognitive health thinking skills, skills, or as we might say, social emotional learning. So I really think that video kind of really chimes it. So literacy may not just be necessarily reading and writing, but it's also the application of skills to also not just, so not just saying we're playing soccer, we're doing skills related to soccer. Also gives you the idea to, like for me, I teach in the Bronx, I may not have access to a giant yard field, but then again, it leads to the conversation where we can talk about how is this authentic? Is this really, if you use these skills for soccer, will the like, trapping, passing, kicking, is that going to really transfer? What else can we transfer those, use those skills for? That's why I think literacy really has a big place in just any phys ed program. So New York, just so you know where I'm coming from. So we came out with the New York scope and sequence, which is based on the Shape America grade level outcomes for grades K to 12. And this is based on good practices that are specific for New York. And it's break, it breaks down into five. And I won't read them all, but I'll kind of just describe them all. So over here, safety and management, which is in red, but this is about practicing class protocols and expectations, personal responsibility, safety, which is really the crux of really any phys ed program that will you see students three times a week, once a week, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, even in kindergarten or for the or for any any student. We need roots, students need routines, teachers need routines, consistency being safe. Where yes, you may be teaching radio loud, but in the in the classroom there's different challenges. Students aren't running around. So this is where students really need to be safe and per, and manage. And like and I said, it's really important. I love to do stations, small group work, and this is really where it shines through, and students really like it. Which kind of goes to the next one, the community building. And developing practice social emotional skills, working small groups and large groups activities, self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, self-assessment, peer assessment, large spatial awareness, personal awareness. So this is really, you know, part of the video is saying that this is that they kind of understand their role and what they're doing in the physical education class, but it also kind of ties into that little last line that extends beyond the peak setting so that they want to, but they also understand how, like I said, the duality of that, how it transfers. And I'll go into that a little more soon, but also locomotive skills, skipping, hopping, how you're moving around and you're traversing in your environment. And if you notice, it's not just critical skills. And you want to build, like we were saying, build confidence in now and the future, not just limited to phys ed, which for them in gymnastics, they might be thinking, oh, wait, I don't, I'm not that comfortable. Personally, I'm not 100% comfortable with gymnastics, but you would think you would be surprised, like the shark, uh, writing a shark in the video, weight transfer, non locomotor, are you taking, are you taking a jump shot with a basketball? How are you going to balance yourself so you don't fall over? Or how are you going to take that jump? and make the shot and then come back down and not fall. Age appropriate challenges. So it kind of, these are skills that students build upon, that they scaffold so that it's vertical. So that when it starts in kindergarten, they can you know keep going with it until they graduate high school. And manipulatives like kicking, dribbling, all those ones where throwing, and once you start it, like I just said, with rhythm and gymnastics, scaffolding and building on it, as students get older. So this is the five areas. Of course, there's many different, this is a scope and sequence. This is just a kind of guide to help us in New York City, where you go. Like I said, I just understand I see elementary students once a week. Um, that was before, and I will touch upon remote learning, but that's a little bit more about. So, one thing that my school has adopted this year is to help us is that health literacy is 
or I like to think of it as cognitive skills, where students are learning to do this in the classroom. They're learning how to think. They can choose, a, they know how to choose a book that's not too hard. They know how to choose a book that's right. Why can't they apply the same kind of thinking process to physical education? And thinking maps, and now it might seem, but this is, I would really recommend thinking maps. It's a very involved program, but it's definitely very worthwhile. And it's great because things that I'm doing for like in this picture, um, you're also using it across the school. So this is great. This is thanks to Ben Landers. This is, I've made my own self-assessment chart. It's kind of hard to see, but basically students know the criteria for, are they making, how are they doing? Are they going above and beyond? Are they doing what's expected? Are they making some mistakes? Is their effort not where it needs to be? And so students know, and this is used all the time, and it's reflected to not just effort, but it's also reflected into how are students act, acquiring the skills. And it's a self-assessment, so they know. And they know the criteria. And it's broken down in a way so that they can understand, so that they, oh, am I level three? And these are the criteria. Is am I level four? So they know how to self-assess themselves. Another one that I love to do, and this is, come on, I love gifts. This is, students do this all the time. We do this all the time. I actually say I call myself, this is how I think and I explain to students. I love to do step by step by step, especially for students that this really helps them out. And this is great because students know how to use a checklist in all grades, feasibly. They, they Theoretically, they all know how to use a checklist. They all have a checklist that they use in the classroom. So for this one, it's tough to dribbling a basketball. There's a picture. The great thing about phys ed is that sometimes we can use a picture because we don't really have the benefit of saying, okay, you just did a math test. You just did writing. You go back and look at it. But now with something like this, they can have experience like that. So they, they, they use the beef acronym, except for dribbling a basketball. So I will literally post this on a, on a projector in my gym and or put on an iPad. I'm fortunate to find some that students can look at it and refer to it as they're playing so that they can look to themselves, wait, what am I doing wrong? That's physical literacy, self-assessing themselves. To have that deeper understanding so that they can think this, wait, what do I need to do better? Or are they looking at someone this is what you're not, wait, maybe you're having trouble because you're not waving to the ground. And sometimes students hold smash, especially in kindergarten, where they go, huh, huh, huh. And I'm sure if you teach elementary, you know that. I love using gifts. I'm, a, I'm in the bowling. So I took this, even though bowling sometimes is a hard sport to transfer and do in the gym because, you know, sometimes the students may not really necessarily go right to a bowling alley right next day or over the weekend. But putting this video so they can see it. Use the kicking a ball. Thank you to QB54, I love it. So now that with them, I could actually teach American football, kicking, throwing, using this, using this so they can see the skills. So I take a step and I kick. And this, this little one over here, that's my daughter, she's almost two. She'll actually be two this Friday on May 8th. I've just learned about cardio and fitness drumming and all the amazing things I love with the remote learning, letting students even see a picture of this. So my daughter is almost two. She can do it. And there's so many things. She just loves to just drum on the ball and it's great exercise. So with older students, what can you do? You can have them do different exercises. It's not just hitting the ball. And the great thing about it is that some of these might be harder to do. You may not really want students kicking inside an apartment. You may not really want them kicking against the wall, but Something like this is possibly feasible. And posting this so that they can refer to themselves, so that they can use it on their own. And you're, sh you're showing a model and a guy that's like, you want them to hopefully internalize what this is and what the steps are, so that they can then finally get to that next level and do it themselves. Here's some other things I love to do. What I love about Buncee, Buncee is a great feature, and I'm really fortunate you can do 3D things as I had posted a picture of the muscles. All right, what, what's this muscle right here? Biceps. What's this sternocleidomastoid? I love that one. What are these muscles in the back? Trapezoids, deltoids, gastrocnemius. I love that one. Hamstrings. Great thing about Bunsey Falls of remote learning, which I'm looking forward to, is you can make things so. Thank you to Open Phys Ed, and I'll dive more into that later. But 
I took their shadow sports idea, which is basically using playing sports and doing going through the skills without the ball, which is great for home learning, especially if you have a lot of students who are stuck indoors. What's great about it is this guy's going to keep rotating, but you could put a little music. So if you're a fan of Mega Man, you make it fun, you make it fancy. Buncee's great. So I took this template and they click on this, they click on the little link and it brings them to a video of doing it. And Buncee's a great, 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 great for that. Now, like I was saying, shadow sports, but I wanted to kind of show you more of what I'm at. Open the envelope up and start the action. Today we're going to play shadow tennis, which is playing tennis without the tennis ball and the tennis racket. This is great. Make sure you have your own space set up. Make sure that you uh, are sure you're standing up and let's do this together. Also, use these skills which you actually do play, play real regular tennis. You can play by yourself, you can play with your friend. There's a couple different challenges I'm going to have you try. So let's start it off. So take the racket and the hand that you like to use, try to draw with. You don't want to pull too tight, you don't want to too loose, so it falls down. I get the ball in my other hand. Okay. Just kind of flip it around because in tennis we use the front part and we also use the back hand. The forehand, back hand. All right. So you put it on the top, you just let the ball roll around. So you actually pretend there's a roll ball, you'll actually get the feel of it, and you'll see it, okay? But I'm going to catch it, all right? Jump it around, get the use of back, and get comfortable using both sides of the tennis racket. If that's hard, it's fine. Do the best you can, okay? Flip it, bounce, bar, back, front, back, hit, bounce, hit. The ball bouncing back. I had a lot of fun making that. But the great thing about that is that students who don't really necessarily get to play tennis or they can use the idea of what to hold the tennis record and what to do and how to look. And I actually didn't make that at a tennis record. I used an app called Doing, which you use a green screen. And this is when I first started using it and kind of experimenting. But you're able to block out, the, you're actually able to kind of block out the back and you're kind of able to kind of impose your, to put your picture and put a video into, which is great for home learning. You put it into a different location. So, like when I did America, when I did baseball, I put myself in Yankee Stadium. When I did my, when I did American football, I put myself at MetLife Stadium with the Giants logo. It's a little fun, actually. The thing you could do. Now, how is distance? Think, take another minute. How has distance learning impacted you? So no matter how distance learning has impacted you, it's been certainly tough for everyone, especially myself. So I, I totally empathize and I know, and I'm, it seems like every single week I'm always trying to find something. I feel like I find a kind of find a, found a groove, some things that work like Google Forms, Buncee works, especially with language learners. And I'm always using new, trying to do new things. This I created, and you could even do this as, as a skills, as a chat I kind of use from a teacher to pay teachers, but when students hand it in, when students turn it in, rather, I should say, that they can check, did I play the game that is assigned? And that's the different criteria. Did I understand how to access the videos? Identify the concepts in the videos. Is it good for assessment? So if a student says they didn't, have, they did the video, but they answered the questions, or they answered the questions but didn't watch the video, it kind of gives me a frame of reference to kind of help them out and give them the best feedback that I can and appropriate feedback. And I could give individual feedback 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 so something like this is very useful and a lot of these things i make myself just like this um a lot of some of the other assignments i said draw a picture of yourself doing the exercises great for kindergarten first and second grade and you're probably thinking if you're in high school or secondary working with older students how is this going to apply well for older students i would do less no picture and more, and more sophisticated questions and I would focus maybe more on like the health-related parts of fitness. But I made this myself. 
What speed did you use when exercising? How'd you know? I use the Linda Hethel's great videos on speed, her brain bites. And this is great. And the even in the gym, you might be thinking to yourself, wait, I don't want if you do five, seven minutes at the, at the end once in a while, this is a great thing. Students will love to do it. I use these, especially when I'm in the classroom. We'll do a lesson and then we'll do some moving. These are great because I can put them on my bulletin board. You can pretty much take this idea and run with it as much any way you can. So another, I, I have to give a shout out to Captain Pete. I love his so Tabata. Tabata is great. Doing 20 seconds of an exercise, as many times as you can of that exercise, and then taking 10 seconds of mandatory rest and then doing it. So I'll show you a little bit. So this is a video I made for my Welcome students. back to Hamble at Home. Today we're going to do a great warm up called Tabata. So show them the video. Which is a not as hard or not as difficult. So let's get started. Tabata is great. You can find free timers online. And you can do. They're free. And they're already programmed to do it. Exercise. Now for 20 seconds, you try to do as many as you can. You know, if you're doing a good speed or if you're not going too hard or too fast, if you could kind of talk. While you're exercising. You want to join me for Tabata Challenge? I'd be more than happy to do it. I actually just did a two school workout with a school I'm in the Bronx with another school in Manhattan. We had about 120 kids, students come and they loved it. Things like this. You can child modify the exercise. This is great because it's good for students. Honestly, my fifth graders love it. As well as my kindergartners. I, you can modify the moves. You could do it. That's something you can do. You can do. And little things like this. I love cardio drumming. Student writing. So this is an assignment I gave to them. I want them to make their own. And I give them the option of either so great thing modified. You give them that, give them the option. They want to do four boxes. They want to do twelve. They want to do eight. So, ooh, she added bag punching. That's pretty good. So she modified. She did different. Pulling up twenty pound weights, lifting thirty pounds. Or easy. Probably the only thing I, the feedback I would give to her is saying, "How many times would you want to do it?" Well, she didn't really want to draw a picture, and that's certainly fine. But it's very clear, and she used an app called Pear Deck which takes Google Slides and you can add, make them interactive so students can answer and draw on them right away. And you'll have access to see that they're answers. So things like this, I love to let students. This is, even though it's not 100% to cheat sheet things, but like I said, now I know I have an idea and I can give her feedback and to help her get her to the next level. And if, whereas if a student only had two or I can help. So it seems like the student is pretty physical either because we see she kind of made it her own. She did different. She did a lot. So she did different varying things like jumping jacks, pulling up, squats. It's pretty varied, which makes me very proud. I love literacy. Literacy, not just, you know, you could have games where students are flipping over cards using words, but I love to, and that's great. One thing I like to do is, and honestly, if you kind of embed it, the students will really get the hang of it. One of my favorite games that I've done numerous times and, and, and is my bowl game where one person is the pin, per they set up the pins, one person gets a turn, one person's a scorekeeper, and then they switch sides. I've had parent nights where students, where parents come and it runs itself because the students just know the game. Over here in phys ed, Physit.org, you have great things where it has a picture. And it's great because they have something literally for every level and so many different activities, not just basketball, but like running. And, and, and the at home section is amazing. That's where I got the Shadow Sports game from before. Open Physit. And this stuff, this thing is free. When I started, even just 10 years ago, this, this was, I would have loved this stuff. But now that it's there, yeah. And like for me, for bowling, bowling is something that I'm personally invested in. I just make it my own. Don't be afraid to innovate. Don't be afraid because there's lots of different. I love Twitter and I love conferences like this because it gives us a chance to really collaborate, especially in tough times like this. So we really can come together and do what's best for ourselves because ultimately at the end of the day, we want to do what's best for our students. Using game cards and card games, 
kind of flip it around. But I love a game like Happy Salmon, which is if you ever played Go Fish, it's kind of the same idea where you have to match with other people. And when you do it, you give them a high five or you pound it or you do something called Happy Salmon. And I've actually played it with my family, adults, and it might be silly, but it's actually kind of fun. Games like Fit. Fitivities from Skilltastics, they're great. Those are all kinds of great games to look into. I mean, there's a lot of resources that I would love to show. And if you're interested, please, I would love to talk about them on a different time. These are some game cards. I do apologize. I forget exactly who I do, but these are great for students who are not playing or even for illness or not playing. Or this is something that they could even just do at home. You could give to them. They could use it in their family. Students want to do it, that they really... If you give them the tools, they love to do these things. They love to be leaders. In elementary schools, I know, just having classroom jobs, they love. Like, I had two students one time, they weren't wearing the right footwear and they couldn't play. So they literally walk, They literally were the peer observers and they walked around with an iPad and they had the checklist and they literally walked around to all the different groups and, they love, and you would think, oh, wait, they don't want to do that. And they loved it. Things like that. It gives them a chance to be a leader. Students want to be leaders. So I can't believe we're almost to the end that literacy, I believe, and I and I hope you agree with me, can enhance any PE program. No matter if you use a little bit of it, a lot of it, somewhere in the middle, it could be the focal point, or you could really embed it and use it for different things. If you don't want to use writing your pencil assessments, you can have Things like clickers, which uses QR, code, QR codes, and it's free, and is a great way to assess. And it can be used to increase a variety of games. I really feel like, going back to what we are talking about physical literacy, that once students know, and they have the skills, and they feel confident, and they feel confident. And we're not just talking about one or two students, we're talking everybody. That really opens up your toolbox of games that you play with the students. One thing I always love to do, especially in, in conferences or even just the three, two. So take another minute or two and think about three things you found useful from today, two things you want to learn more about, and one thing you can implement immediately. All right. I want to acknowledge some special people. I feel like there's so many people that I mentioned. I mean, now I've gotten a chance to actually show you. But thank you to P ben special, PE Specialist, Ben Landers, PEspecialist.com. He was about the, the self-assessment, those pictures. Captain Pete. He's the one with the Tabata. That's great. Melanie Levenberg with Dance Play. They're fantastic. They all they take – it's great not just for adults, but also a lot of our students. She has a lot of cool, fun songs. It's all about empowerment. And having students do the best that they can, even if they do, they don't make it. It's not just like regular road dancing where if they mess it up or they have to follow the skill, the step-by-step. -step. Thinking maps and balance between, like I said, it, it's hard to fully, I could probably do a webinar just on that, but thinkingmap.com, balance between, open phys ed, um, and like I said, if anybody watching, if I do apologize, if I forget, but thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all that you contribute. Everything you do. My, my One of my professors at Adelphi University, Dr. Mara Manson, she's been very helpful talking with me and kind of giving me a deeper understanding of how to teach 
not just literacy, but also teach it to others, other colleagues and professionals so that they get a better understanding of it. Whew. I'm trying to think. Yeah, these are, like I said, not the Beal. This is not the definitive. Hopefully, there's one thing. I always try to at least come back with one thing, one or two things that I could use soon right away. I want to say thank you so much for attending. This has been a great. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. If you have any questions, just say or comments. <laughs> questions is for comments. Please email me, jphambel at gmail.com. I'm always a I'm pretty big advocate and I'm a pretty big contributor on Twitter. Uh, JM in the gym PE. JM in the gym PE on Twitter. If you follow me, I usually follow back and I love the post and I love to read about new things. You could also see all the cool new things that Open and Phys Ed is doing, that Shape is doing, or even just lots of professionals that honestly, that's where I got a lot of these great ideas. And if I could close with a few final thoughts, I really, like I said, I really appreciate. Thank you, Fizz Edagaji, for giving me this opportunity to talk to you today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's amazing to be able to be selected to talk to so many people and share my philosophy and share my practices and hopefully to inspire you so that they can help you out, whatever your, whatever your program is, whatever your level of program, no matter whether you're teaching five-year-olds, high schoolers, college, no matter what. Um, like I said, there's so many things you do, and these are tough times, so I really feel like it's really important that we, that we stick together. So, like I said, thank you so much for attending, and hopefully, like a couple of things I want to say, Buncey, thank you, Buncey, for letting me. This has been great. I really enjoyed using their platform. Um, like I said, a couple of things that you want, if you want to use right away, Pear Deck. It's a great thing. To, it's an add-on to Google Slides if you want to use something like Nearpod. These are great assessment things because you could take any presentation. You could do it. Whew. Thank you so much. Once again, my name is Jim Hamble. And thank you for attending my webinar on strategies and techniques to add literacy into your physical education program. Once again, my name is Jim Hamill. I'm a teacher at the New York City Department of Education in the Bronx, New York. Ooh, thank you again, Physicology. Thank you again for coming. And thank you to everyone who allowed me to use their materials. I hope you check them out. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for coming. Want to copy this presentation and slide? I'll be email me, and I'll be more than happy to send it to you as well, as well as any other materials that you saw in this presentation today. Also, I'd recommend checking out those respective ones. Many people are more than happy to contribute, and if you reach out to them, share what they have with you. That's why I love Twitter because on Twitter, maybe five or six resources of like a day, there's always something available to be used. So thank you for attending once again.